bit about your latest book and why did you write the book? Well, the book is called How to Be Your Badass Self Using Your Inner Energy, a guide to using your inner energy for brand success. The book came about as a result of my own work, Dave. I think it was um, when I was building my own brand and I really had a lot of trial and error in order to understand how to do it. I didn't even know the first thing about graphics. I didn't have any idea about how personal branding really mattered to your and company branding and what are all the components of it. I was really not someone who had been trained as a branding or marketing strategist. And so it was working through all of that and then finding huge success through the things that I was doing without even knowing I was doing it the right way. So before a year had even elapsed, my company was actually recognized and received its award, uh, uh, an award. And within um, 11 months of me launching my company, I received my second award. And it's just been award after awards. Um, yesterday, someone asked me, Annie, do you go to a wholesale market and get your awards? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to say that, but no, hard work does pay off. And I think what I follow is something called failing forward. I didn't fear failure. I didn't fear making those mistakes. I did it. I tried it. Didn't work. I brushed myself off, tweaked it a little bit, decided I wanted to change this and that, changed my team number of times, and then just kept on moving upwards uh, from those points. It's an alignment of what is your inner voice? What is it that you are saying internally? And does it align with what your messaging is externally? So how do you build brand authenticity? How do you build the message so that what you're saying, your vision, you're in alignment with what you're putting out there, whether it be the colors, whether it be your logo choice, all of the subtle messaging that has to be there in alignment. Another component that's very, very important is, you know, many people have been grandfathered during this unfortunate time where we have found a lot of people being laid off or just no longer having that typical job that they were using or used to having. And so, if you are someone who's been in middle management or in senior management and you find yourself grandfathered, all of a sudden you're scratching your head going, what do I do well? Well, it's one thing to be qualified in something. It's one thing to like doing something. And it's another thing when someone approaches you for your expertise. So if those three things are not in alignment, you don't really know who you are as a person. It's time to take a look at your branding and get that in alignment. That's fantastic. So if you had some advice to give to people right now who might be new authors, what advice would you give to new authors? I believe that there's a book in everyone. I think it's very, very important that you get that. And for me, it was like giving birth to a giraffe baby. I would say that the entire writing process took almost two years and massaging what was in your head and putting that down into paper and putting it into a cohesive, coherent fashion uh, in which it flowed from topic to topic was important. But that was not how it began. So I think the first step to do is to just get your thoughts down on paper. Start down with what it is. What is your focus? You know, you might want to be writing about the entire world. You might like to talk about the kitchen sink and the, you know, the, 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 the spare room and the shelf. You can't bring everything together in one book. So find your focus on what it is that you're really wanting to talk about. And find your niche. You know, um, make it your unique niche. Make sure that there aren't a gazillion authors writing out about the same thing in the same manner because no one's going to want to read it, another book about that, right? So how is it going to be different? Fantastic. How is it going to stand apart in that sea of mediocrity? And that is very important, not just for your book, but also your messaging when you go on later to promote your stuff. Super. The, uh, the next question is a little bit of visualization into 2021. And if we could get this book, How to Be Your Badass Self, into somebody's hands, anywhere around the world, anyone in who, one or two people would you love to get it into their hands? Wow, that's, a, that's an incredibly uh, challenging question. Um, as I mentioned, I believe that any young person who is starting off in their vision, their dream, I think this is a uh, book to get um, as a uh, guide before the pitfalls happen, right? I think it's very important that we all fail forward. So I think it's important that our unique journeys are unique in that way that we do have those mistakes that we make. But there are a lot of things that you can actually align and get into alignment uh, through this book. 
I feel that this is some a, a book that can be used as a teaching guide. And so if you are a, a, a someone who is in an educational institution, um, you can actually use this. If you're a branding, marketing strategist, you're in high school and you're teaching a course on business marketing, this is a book that really could you be used. Um, students will benefit. I think the age that entrepreneurs are starting has dropped significantly. And so you're seeing young people. For example, Time has just awarded um, a young a young girl, 15 years old, as you know, a young person who is a, of an entrepreneurial mind who has made impact and and is making impact. So the journey really is no longer reserved for those who are already in the line of work. I think it starts from young, and just the same way that we need to teach financial literacy to our young people, we also need to teach other business strategies that are going to help them and enable them to be the best that they can be. Fantastic. And uh, you mentioned Amazon is one of the areas that people can reach out and we're going to put the link below. So any comments, uh, we definitely welcome comments or questions uh, to be able to reach out to Annie. Uh, also, your, your contact details will be put on the comment. If you have enjoyed what we shared today, please subscribe, uh, add any comments. Uh, this series of uh, interviewing authors is something I'm excited about. It's a, a special little gift of care, uh, giving for uh, December. Uh, in the last year, uh, I guess my last little question would be, in the last year, has there been a movie or a book that has inspired you? Or is, I know you're also into the movies, so perhaps a, a movie or a book that has inspired you in the last year? Oh, wow. It's amazing. Um, 2020 has been a challenge for many. For me, it's been a blessing. I cannot believe the number of accomplishments that have happened in this one year alone, beginning with a Guinness World Record at the start of the year. And I was honored to be a part of that as well. Now, that's a unique sort of um, reward, I could say, or, or acknowledgement. And yes, as a child, when I had Ripley's and Guinness as the books that I read, you know, to get yourself into one of those was never a thought in my imagination. I read those books, but it was never or something that I thought I could actually do to find myself part of that was great. But I think the two films, my first film, A Bloody Mess, has gone on to secure 29 to 30 nominations or awards worldwide. That was an amazing accomplishment on its own. And it's the work of Asi Sethi, the director. Now, that film was about menstruation and the stigmas associated with menstruation, a dialogue that we have and need to have continuously with multiple cultures. My second film is really my baby, Fear, Face Everything and Rise, was released in the end of August, um, or actually, sorry, the end of September, and has been making huge impact worldwide. It has just garnered its 11th award, and uh, it continues. I'm waiting to hear from another 49, so I think at one point I might have to have two posters just to put all the awards on it, but it's doing really, really well. Um, fear, Face Everything and Rise is really about uh, an inspiration, being an inspiration and being that voice for the voiceless, to be able to stand up for what it is that you believe and dream in, that we all as children, as young people, we have dreams and sometimes we put aside those dreams because we feel either pressure from our family, our friends, our community, our culture, society in general, we feel that we're not good enough in some way or another or we're not accomplished enough or educated enough in some manner. And what I'm saying is that put aside all of that, hear your inner voice and go for it. Because when you do go for it, you're going to be in alignment with what you truly want to do. And when you're in alignment, that energy that radiates from you is going to be magnetic and you're going to draw people to you and you're going to draw accomplishments to you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Annie. And what would be a way for people to find a little bit more about you, the two movies that you are, were part of and uh, orchestrated over the last uh, couple of years? Well, uh, the film trailers for Fear are on my YouTube channel. You can reach out to Annie J. Koshi. Um, the tra uh, films are both still in the festival circuit, which means that they are not for public consumption at the moment. However, A Bloody Mess has been screened online a couple of times. And uh, Fear, uh, stay tuned as to when those screenings are going to be happening. We've just begun that journey over there. Um, it is making impact. You can reach out to me on my social media at Annie Koshi or Annie J. Koshi Media Consultant. GTA South Asia Media Network is my company brand. You can find me on Instagram as well as on LinkedIn. Find me on one of those platforms. If you wish to speak to me or book time with me, I will send you a Calendly link and you can do that. 
Well, fantastic. Thank you so very much for your time today. Uh, folks, we'll leave the comments, uh, we'll leave the connections down on, in the comment section. Thank you so very much for your time today and wishing you an absolutely brilliant remainder of 2020 and a magnificent 2021. Thank you. It Annie. was a pleasure. Honor to be here.